Hello! Happy Thursday! We've made it thus far. <laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> I'm so excited and Stubb is, is also raising a hand, preaching that it's Thursday. Almost Friday. <laughs> Friday light. Friday light. Friday, Friday light. Um, I'm Jen from Wine Antics. Uh, I am the creative... I don't know, brain matter that is behind Wine Antics and, and some of Wine Antics Live. You should know my lovely baby blue eyed co-host that is Stub from CorkEnvy.com as well. And, uh, and we're here. Yes, with, we are. Yeah, we are. We, <laughs> we're here. And we have, we're, we're continuing the theme of love in February and we're kind of doing it a little cheeky like, right? So we're, we're going to do a game. We're going to do a game that's called, that many people know. It's two truths and one lie. And we each have our two truths and we have our one lie. And this show is going to require a lot of participation from you guys. Um, and we have a great guest, Rob Frisch from Odd Bacchus, behind the scenes, willing and ready to talk to us and share his couple truths, couple lie, or at least one lie. <laughs> um, so Stubb, let's kick off the show and let me know, what have you, what have you been up to? Wow. Well, you know, nothing. I've just been sitting around doing nothing, actually. No, what have I been up to? Uh, for those of you who do know me and follow me, I've been doing uh, some uh, recipe videos, kind of getting into those a little bit, pairing some uh, beverages with some great recipes. Uh, the recipes aren't necessarily difficult, but I try to do things that maybe people are a little afraid of to do in their everyday lives or think take longer than they should. And right now I'm doing in in support of uh, other things I've done. So Daytime Blue Ridge appearance uh, on WSLS.com in Roanoke or my magazine articles for City Magazine, also in Southwest Virginia. Uh, I did some Super Bowl videos. I did a, a cheesesteak and a lobster roll in honor of both of the teams in the Super Bowl uh, ahead of that so we can amp up our Super Bowl parties. But this is all, and I'll tell you what it's ahead of in just a minute. Um, well, I'll tell you right now. It's all ahead of my new weekly show, which will premiere on March 1st. Uh, and it's a recorded show. It's not live. You don't have to tune in immediately, but we'll be dropping them on March 1st called Supper with Stub, whereby I make a cocktail and then show you a, a menu item or, or, or a meal to make for your family. And when we're done, I'll pair a beer and wine to actually have with a meal. But I'll show you a cocktail to drink while you're having the meal or while you're making the meal to make it a little more fun. How's that sound? That sounds pretty awesome. I'm hoping it'll be awesome. So some of these uh, recipe videos are a little bit of practice for that and uh, just a little bit of fun as well. Also, I've been doing, uh, again or we, we've ended the first season of the One Bourbon, One Charter, One Beer podcast with my good friend, Christopher Kern. We just dropped our mostly last episode of the season today, the worst of season one, wherein Kern and I yelled at each other for our worst song picks of the season. If you haven't listened to the podcast, listen to it. We each do a playlist alternating weeks and compete against a very special guest to guess whether we think it's a wine, beer, or spirit song that we've chosen, and a specific beverage. It's really uh, listening to music and drinking disguised as a game show, so that's fun. And what else? I'm getting ready for U.S. BevX uh, here in D.C. I think this is, is this the fourth one of those? Jen, I know you're working behind the scenes. Uh, is it the third or fourth? This will be my second. I think it's actually the third. This will be my second attending uh, as a uh, uh, as press, uh, my first conference last year experience was amazing and I'm really looking forward to that. Jen, I think we have some friends coming to town also who wouldn't normally be here. And of course, our friends in town all the time as well, uh, who will also likely be attending. So that'll be a great time right here in Washington, D.C. Yeah, I know Jessica Gar Garcia, who we yes. know from, she was, well, she's at Linganore, right? She was. Previously. Yeah. Yes. And now she has Cluster and Vine. She put Cluster out a big Vine. promo thing for, to go to US Bev Expo. So we'll see her. And I'm hoping JVB, who's in the comments tonight, who's out there, I hope we're going to get to see you as well. So wow. Hopefully. JVB said I look even more millennial than usual. <laughs> uh, thanks, JVB. I, I, I don't only owe you a drink. I owe you dinner, my friend. Thank you. So, 
<laughs> Great, Stub, you've been uh, you've been busy, and you've given me an adequate amount of time to share this out to a few places and a few people. So thank well, you. That's the whole point. I can tell you how I've been sleeping. I got a new mattress like two weeks ago. That's that's been going well. So oh yeah, keep going, keep going. Like, song like what what do, what do you need here? Do we have requests? All I got is this guitar, three chords, and the truth. That's what I say. All right, all right. On that note, we're. <laughs> We're going to take stuff away for a second and let me take over the screen. <laughs> so, uh, like Stubb said, we're both going to US Bev Expo and super excited about that. That's the 21st and the 22nd, and it's actually going to change Wine Antics Live over to the Tuesday before. And I can look at what the date is right now, and it escapes me. It's the 19th. So the 19th or the 20th, we're going to look at. So that'll change the show for a little bit. But we're going to do something very specific to US Bev Expo, which we're excited about. We've been mulling over the topics because there's a lot of great content out there. And we want to at least talk about that, talk about the content, and uh, talk about what we're excited about for anybody else that may be on the fence about going or can't make it at all. Um, I a lot of viewers out here, because uh, a lot of you are my friends, know about the ambassador program that I've been building out for Wine Trail Adventures. That concluded, and I'm really excited about it. I'm super excited to help my peers get out to wineries more often, get their content heard, and in the long run, get paid. So look, look out for the next phase of the ambassador program, which is going to be asking a lot of, not super personal, personal information, but a lot of information. It's going to be a survey. I'm so sorry. I'm a horrible marketing person. Um, no, it's, it's really <laughs> kind of simple. Uh, it's just enough to get the next phase going. And then lastly, I'm going to bring Stubb on for this one. Our friends over at Craft Wine Association, which is craftwine.org, are official. Yes. Super official. Uh, we got a, a little sneak peek of their press release. They were official as of today. The rest of it, the rest of the word is going to trickle out tomorrow. But this is going to give us all of the things that we really love about small producers. It's going to give us a stamp of guarantee that says we know that these people are going to be, the, the wines chosen are going to be uh, lots under 5,000 cases or fewer. It's going to be made with grapes that come from an identifiable, identifiable vineyard, right? And that the production was a winemaker led from start to finish. And there's so, like, that's what I picked out of the press release because that's what we really care about in terms of small producers. Sometimes things get lost in big brands and the the monopolies that are the big corporations that run most of the wine wineries in, in America. Seeing a craft wine association label knows that you're going to get a small producer. And I'm excited about that. I totally agree with you on this, Jen. And we, we met uh, the craft wine uh, people last year. Uh, personally, we knew they were in the world, but we met them and got to talk to them last year. Uh, great organization and really this is a near and dear to my heart thing, especially here in Virginia. We have a lot of small producers here, but even when I travel to other wine regions in the country, uh, you know, I want to go to the large producers with the big, you know, Italian inspired tasting rooms and wineries or go to Bordeaux and, and go to the wineries that have tiled floors in their working winery. I know that's crazy, right? You go to Chateau Chevalier, they have tile, like actual tile, nicer than any of us have in our kitchen or bathroom in their actual production facility. Now, this is a show place and they're of course making some of the most beautiful wines in the world. But for me personally, part of my love of wine is that almost uh, that blue collar working class work ethic of taking something from the land and turning it into something beautiful uh, in small batches. So I, I really love the, the craft winery uh, idea and, and certification. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, of course, we'll share that when they put this uh, press release out officially tomorrow. Yeah, I put the link up so you can get a little teaser of what uh, Carol's website and Carol Carol Lawson is the, the one that I have made a good connection with over the last year. And that's why I'm really excited about it. Um, so check out the, the link and know what products you're going to get from that. And, and uh, the press release should be out tomorrow. And I hope it'll be on the website. Um, so I think... Maybe let's welcome Rob on. Maybe talk a little bit about what, what we're drinking and yes. then tell each other some lies. Let's do it. <laughs> 
All right, Rob. Sweet little lies. <laughs> Tell me lies, Rob. Tell me sweet little lies. <laughs> Are we gonna do the the stories right now? Is no. That, is, 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 <laughs> no. Right? Introduce right. yourself. Introduce oh, yourself. Oh, the introduction. I don't know you. I can lie about that certainly. No. Yeah. Go <laughs> ahead. Yeah. No. I hi. <clears throat> I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm Rob Frisch, and I write the wine blog called Odd Bacchus, which is dedicated to drinking the unusual and the obscure. And I've written it since 2011, which is kind of hard to believe at this point. And uh, my latest foray where I discovered a whole bunch of really cool wines was Morocco. Um, they are making some amazing stuff there. I don't know amazing, but like, like really delicious, actually. It was very surprising. And I just got back two days ago. So I'm a little jet lagged. I'm, I'm very jet lagged, I should say. Um, this is about the latest I've stayed up uh, since I've been home. And I am drinking alcohol. So I'm just going to make that disclaimer right now that we're we might be in for a little bit of a bumpy ride um <laughs> this this is actually i'm drinking in honor of the approaching wine blogger conference in walla walla Ooh. i've got this undaunted malbec from uh walla walla here we are we can see that it's got a nice i i i'm not sure if it's a moose or a stag but i i think i'm going to say it's a stag or a buck on the, the label, which is, you know, that's kind of sexy, right? For yeah. Valentine's Day? Yeah. <laughs> it is delicious. It is well, how many points rich. do we have on that, on that, uh, on those horns there? Right? Ooh, yeah. No, yeah. that's, that's a good, like, 12 pointer, something like that. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. that's good for hunting friends out there. That's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is rich and uh, kind of silky. It's a little chocolatey. <clears throat> so it's good stuff. So I'm enjoying this immensely. Mm. Oh, but I didn't say. So I'm, I'm working on a new project with my dear friend, Liz Barrett, who also writes a fantastic wine blog. She's a certified specialist of wine. And we have started a web series on YouTube called Name That Wine, where we get other people to buy us wine, and then we dare each other to figure out what the wine is. And so it's this blind tasting show, and it is a hoot. We get we we get it wrong a little more than we get it right, um, I will say. But uh, we have learned so much, and it is so much fun tasting with her because she is hilarious, and um, she has the best wine descriptors of anyone I know. So she is great. And uh, I think that you guys actually have a little clip from the show, I understand, in your video vault that you were. Let's play, play that beautiful B footage. <laughs> you can see what you're in for when you watch an episode of Name That Wine. Uh, mm. Yeah, the right looks no, looks right. a little more festive and fun. Number two looks more festive and fun. All right, okay. I'm gonna, let's I'm gonna... smell. Well, oh, well, that smells awfully good. That smells awfully good. You got some oh. citrus, and you do get a little of the yeasty yum yums. You do get like Meyer lemon. Ooh, Meyer lemon. I know, because Meyer lemon's a little sweeter. Mm hmm. And, that's true. And a less sour than I regular. Like that. Oh my god, peach, oh. almond. I was just gonna say almond. Oh my god, we're doing. Bam! That smells real good. Oh, Should boy. we? All right, let's. Okay. <clears throat> Shake out that nose. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I got a nose full of bubbles. <laughs> It's, this is dangerous business, folks. I know. <laughs> I caught you at the end there. You, you, the one thing you guys are missing is how much everybody loves to tease me. Like, make funny, <laughs> make, make, make jokes, do silly faces when they know a video is playing. But that was such a cheeky video, and I think it's such a great little representation of, of your personality. And I'm sorry, I don't know your co-host, very well, but I want to know her. <laughs> she will be in Walla Walla for the Wine Blogger Conference, so. I will not. Uh, oh dear. Well, then you just have to come to Chicago and do an episode with us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look how easy that was. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna put up the link in, in a moment uh, to the YouTube uh, channel and it's new, it's fresh. You've got 10 yes. videos up and 48 subscribers already kind of jealous i'm just gonna say oh thanks <laughs> excellent great yes thank you for putting up the link and we would love it if you subscribed 
please. Yes, it's great, Rob. I haven't watched every episode, but I, I'm trying to catch up on them. I love it. I love the energy. I obviously love you. Uh, we've known each other for, I think we tried to figure this out last time you were on. When we officially met, um, it's been several years ago now. Yeah. I in 2011. I started Cork Envy in 2011 as well. Oh, cool. Um, That's so, so awesome. I'm trying to remember like how soon after that we actually started running into each other. And I've mentioned this on previous shows. When you're tasting with Rob or tasting in the same room as Rob, uh, he's the guy who takes the most meticulous tasting notes in the history of the world. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. It's a great thing to watch, but he can still actually sit there and cut up with you uh, when you run into each other at the different tables. It's it's amazing. And uh, But yeah, Rob knows what he's doing uh, and obviously trusts his palate. And when he finds you in the middle of the room and says, go over to this table and taste that, take his word for it and go do it. <laughs> Whether well, it's good or bad. Well, I... Sometimes he sent me to a couple of wines. He's like, did you taste this over here? And I'm like, no. He's like, um, yeah, let me know what you think. <laughs> so <laughs> it can be good or bad either way, depending on the room, but it's it's always good. And and usually our palates are uh, light up fairly well, Rob. So I appreciate that every time we do run into each other tasting. Well, that is so kind of you to say. And absolutely, I enjoy tasting with you very much. You are a hoot to taste with and uh, you you make it a, a joy to, to drink wine together, absolutely. And uh, it is, you know, and I, I do write my own tasting notes, but I also, I write down what other people are saying around me sometimes. And that is, that's the most fun to go through in those notebooks and see what other people had for their, their notes. I was just looking at one of my notebooks recently, actually going back for the heck of it. And uh, there was, someone was drinking a Gewürztraminer and they tasted it and they said, this, this tastes like my grandmother's neck. And I was like, um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> How exactly do you know what your grandmother's neck tastes like? I mean, is that, <laughs> wow. Is that yeah. like leathery? Chanel number five and fatty? Maybe? Is that what it tastes like? <laughs> I, yeah, I, it, it, he immediately turned red and, uh, yeah, and uh, I think it was sort of perfumed and like minerally. Okay. Maybe like some sort of powdery quality, like baby powder or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And but old, maybe it was past its prime. Okay. Like right. grandma. Yeah. Okay. I don't Grandma's know how to segue between grandma it's and two truths and one lie, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> there we go. That's the segue. <laughs> so Rob, please, please kick us off in telling us your two truths and a lie. And for everybody who's going to play along, because this isn't just about us, it isn't about us guessing it, though we will, you know, make comments. Mm -hmm. um, the, he's going to say that, you know, number one, number two, number three. And when he's done telling all three of his stories, put it in the comments and vote which one you guys think is a lie. I know I saw Thea out there. And uh, I know I saw Kern as well. So I know mm -hmm. there's going to be some good guesses from people that may know you Rob. and just a little yeah. more background jen we're, we're talking about we're talking about dating and potentially romantic situations with two truths and a lie in honor of valentine's day coming up next week so let's preface that a little bit so people aren't shocked when we start into some of these uh, maybe <laughs> more illicit stories that's you true know, we should give them uh, some warning <laughs> i can speak for no, a couple this of is stories though that's all i'm saying absolutely so wine related <laughs> dating stories <laughs> Uh, two truths and one lie. No, 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 nothing shocking here. I promise this will all be G-rated. So, I don't promise that. Number one, I'm at a club in Chicago okay. at an underwear party, and I meet this guy, and he is, you know, he's pretty zesty. Mm -hmm. And so I invite him over for dinner, and uh, so I, and I, to cook, I'm cooking, and he offers to bring a bottle of wine, and of course, I agree. And uh, in preparation of his coming, I light, it was something ridiculous, like 19, 20 candles around my little studio apartment at the time, because I thought, you know, that'd be very romantic. And um, considering where we met, I was hoping, you know, I was pretty sure that things would turn out well that evening. So he comes over, yes, and he looks very snazzy, and he presents the wine which was Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio. And my heart just sank because what wine is less sexy than Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio? Pinot Grigio, 
For this? No. Barefoot? No. I, well, that's true. It wasn't barefoot. I don't know. At least that has some funk to it. Ugh. <laughs> But Santa Margarita, it's just bland and overpriced and overpackaged. And anyway, I knew I at that moment that it was just over. And indeed, I did not get any that night. Hmm. It was very sad. Okay. All I got was a, a sad, empty bottle of Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio. All right. Interesting. All right. Number dos. Okay. Number two. All right, we're all, so I'm doing all my stories. Do all three of them in a row, and then people will guess which one is the lie. Wow. Okay. Let's Number two. This. Number two. So I thought we were going round robin here, Jen. I well, think I think we should go round robin. Well, Wouldn't that be more? But fun? how are people going to remember? We all right, all right. Remind them as we go through. <laughs> Jen hates me right now. I do because because I can see it either way. All right, if all right, if you we could go. Know what you want me to do? I'll continue if you want, but. I, I think we should go one, two, three, so that everybody can get a vote in. And look at this. Okay. This is democracy right now, right, right here. You can say what you think would be better, but I'm going to squash you like a bug stuff. Yeah, that seems <laughs> democratic. Democratic. Yeah. Democratic, yeah. Right. All let's right, do let's it. do number two, yeah. Rob. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so number two. All right, which story? Um, oh, so uh, number two uh my company is my company sent me to venice for business and uh it is november 2002 and so venice so first of all my company asked me you know do you still want to go considering what happened and in you know september 11th uh no i'm sorry this is november 2001 november 2001 and uh my company asked me, do you still want to go considering what happened September 11th? And I was like, yes, yes, of course. I mean, that's ridiculous. Everything is going to be fine. It's Venice. And I knew that the Europeans would be like, oh, you know, brave American braving the, the airlines, but tragic, you know, tragic, brave American. That's, you know, catnip, right? So anyway, so I'm in Venice, which is totally empty, which was amazing because that never happens and it probably will never happen again. And uh, uh, I finished my appointments and so forth. And I go to, I'm just walking around and I find this wine shop and I go in and uh, there is this really attractive gentleman running the store. And uh, we get to talking about wine and I buy some Amarone from him and uh, he seems to be kind of flirty. And so I decide to be brave and I ask him to join me for dinner because I'm just there by myself. And so he does. And I, I'm staying at the Greedy Palace, uh, thanks to my company, which is on the Grand Canal. So we have this amazing dinner at the Greedy Palace with the best Prosecco I've ever had and some more Amarone. And Amarone, which is, you know, oh, it's such a delightful wine, very romantic, the opposite of Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio. It's made with dried grapes, so it's really rich and full and yeah, it's, it floats my boat. And so uh, I said to him uh, as, as dinner was finishing, you know, uh, from my room, they, they upgraded me to this junior suite with a balcony and you can see the Salute Church right across the Grand Canal. And he's like, well, we can see the Salute Church from our table. And I said, well, yes, but the, the view is better from my balcony. And uh, he's like, I, I'm not sure I believe you. It's pretty great here. And I was like, there's only one way to find out. And so he did come up stairs with me and uh, we made out on the balcony overlooking the Grand Canal and the Salute Church. And it was, it was a really magnificent evening. Even if that's a lie, that's like one of the most romantic lies I've heard in a really long time. <laughs> it sounds pretty damn romantic, no matter what. <laughs> it was good stuff. Okay. I like right, it. That's number two. All right. All right number, number three, I'm going to keep on trucking. <clears throat> Germany. So I was studying for a year at the University of Freiburg in southern Germany, and the university organized a trip for... It was about uh, 20 of us that went on this trip to the Mosul Valley, and we did some wine tasting and visiting like Trier and so forth. And there was this one guy on the tour who uh, I really hit it off with. And the last night of the tour, 
we're staying at this castle on top of a hill overlooking Burncastle Coos, which is a medieval city on the Mosul River, and it's surrounded by vineyards. And so we go down through the vineyards, it's just the two of us, and we find this little charming restaurant, and it's got candles and everything, and we have a superlative Mosul Riesling to go with our dinner. And even as students, we could afford a really good one because it was a local wine and the Rieslings there, I mean, I don't know how they get so marked up when they come to the US, but, but they're, they're quite reasonable, even for a really good one. It was, I still remember it, it was like fruity and rich, but it had that shaft of focus spice and minerality. Oh, it's so good. And I had schnitzel with a Riesling cream sauce, which is one of my very favorite things. And uh, we walked arm in arm back up to the castle through the vineyards. And uh, this was, however, a youth hostel castle, because this was back in my student days. And um, so it's communal bedrooms. And so we were sort of wandering through the castle and eventually we uh, try the basement, which was um, more or less unrenovated with these big old vaults. And they turned it into a sort of a locker room with showers and stuff. And I was like, yes, this is like the set of a porno. So I'm in. And uh, we had a very enjoyable evening together. Just just straight a set of, <laughs> of a porno. <laughs> okay. So to recap really quick, number one, we could, we could talk to these based on the wines that you had, which is a really great indication. So number one was the Pinot Grigio, mm -hmm. better than barefoot Pinot Grigio. <laughs> <laughs> Number two was the romantic uh, moment with Emeroni. And then number three was uh, uh, German, did you say Riesling? Yes, Mosul Riesling. Mosul Riesling with a little schnitzel. <laughs> well, maybe a lot of schnitzel. Lot I, don't, of schnitzel. I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> he didn't say little, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Stop editorializing. <laughs> <laughs> it's made for TV. Sorry. <laughs> We're keeping it cheeky, keeping it fun. I've said that three times tonight, so it's real. All right. <laughs> so what do you guys think? What what do you think is... Oh, we got some comments. Or, and they're all from Thea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, what she's she recapping for us. We're asking oh, okay. which one is the lie. So two which one the is lie. the lie? Huh? Two of these are true? Two of them are true. Okay. And one of them's a lie. Yes. <laughs> so let us know what you think is a lie. Well, stop. You tell you tell me which one do you think while we're while we're giving people a chance to vote. Which one do you think is the lie? So, mm, this is tough for me. Um, however, I'm going to say that the first story is a lie, mm. and here's why. Rob Rob met this uh, fetching young gentleman in an underwear party, uh, which sounds amazing, by the way. And I think I'm going to sign up for the one I've saw I've seen advertised on Facebook here in the DC area soon. Uh, based on this story. Um, I don't know. And you did you say when that was exactly, Rob? How long ago that was? I, I didn't say when it was, but okay. I mean, I... All right. Well, obviously before you were married. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to say that was a while ago. Now, Rob, I, I'm trying to put dates together. I don't know how... Stop it. Line. Don't analyze that. <laughs> no, I'm saying though, I don't think there's a situation in which Rob, uh, good wine or average or below average wine doesn't get a little piece of a honk, <laughs> decided to come over after he asked him out at an underwear party. That's all I'm saying. I think that's the lie. So the, the fact that you think what is a lie is that he did get some. <laughs> I like your reasoning. I yeah. can't deny it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because he went on and on about how fetching this young lad was at the underwear party. But, and that he was uh, very excited about it. <laughs> I don't think a mediocre wine would uh, would prevent uh, anything from happening there uh, based on overtures, an agreed date, coming over for dinner, all of the candles and the romance. Rob, I, I don't think you can't not seal the deal is what I'm saying, Frank. <laughs> that, I really appreciate your confidence in me. That's that's pretty good logic. I, I like where you were going with that stuff. Oh, me uh, too. Myself, as well as the majority of people, though Lauren Zimmerman says number one, she thinks that's the lie, but Kelly, Kelly Cohen and uh, Thea and Rhett and I think number two is the lie. Oh, fascinating. And I don't know. Um, I think because it's it's too idyllic for me in my head that um, I think you spend a lot of time filling in the story 
with a lot of romance. And for me, that seems like a distractor. So sometimes we we tell lies. We fill a lot of fluff in there to tell lies. Interesting. Okay. So now you get to tell us which is the tr- which one is the lie. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, yes, you're correct. Number two is the lie. Oh. I did go there on a business trip. I did go to Venice on a business trip in uh, uh, November 2001, but um, I was with a older colleague and there was none of that happening. So, but we did have a lovely dinner at the Greedy. <laughs> like I said earlier, if, even if that one was a lie, which it is, I, I thought it was the most damn romantic lie I've heard in a really long time. Well, thank you. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and and Stubb, I was very disappointed that that yeah it didn't work out after the underwear party. I mean, come on, of why course. why did he go to the underwear party? You re- that's what I'm saying. It started at an underwear party. So if you watch, <laughs> you were actually at the underwear party there, right? Right. Oh yes. Yes. Oh, there you go. See, that's I was the in silver a great cowboy lie. boots. There's some truth to it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. All right. We have two more players in this. Stubb and I both have prepared the comments for this. Mine are going to be very short. So do would you like to would you like to go, Stubb? Or would you um, like me to go? Uh dealer's choice here, Jen. You no, tell see, me. Why is it why do I have to decide everything? Why don't you go? You okay. go. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna crack this beer. Do it. Cause oh, that's lovely. Lots of foam what, too. Right near my computer. Here, Jen? Mm-hmm. That's cool. So that makes it appropriate. And this is kind of the scale and the prestige of all of my very short <laughs> moments that I'm going to talk about here. They all happened when I was back in the military because I don't have salacious dates anymore. They're kind of boring. I'm sorry. Exciting things just really don't happen on dates with me anymore. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm still a fun person. We need to fix that. I know, right? <laughs> Not compared to my military days. Mm. So Jen, these are. You and I have fun like girlfriend dates when we get together. Yeah, but just not compared to the stories that I have for this. Yes. <laughs> so most of them, you know, complement this three notch brewing company single. I have to remember single hopped rye PA. So it's not an IPA; it's a rye PA. So I'm excited rye about PA that. Rye PA out of Charlottesville, if I'm not mistaken. Probably. Yes, yeah, three notched out of Charlottesville. There you go. He knows his German or German. He knows his Virginia beers better than I do. I've got the German Mosel Riesling on my head now. <laughs> I'm gonna take out a Craigslist ad on your behalf, Jen, and we're gonna spice things no, up for no, you. No, we're not. No, we're good. <laughs> uh, Rob, let's go straight to Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna swipe. Right. I'm gonna swipe the wrong way for both of you guys. Okay. <laughs> 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 you get so my number for my number first one my number first one because i'm done speaking for the day is um a story of when i was in ait which is advanced individual training when i was in the military and there's a lot of restrictions in that time right but we always find good ways to to work around those restrictions one of those restrictions was i really enjoyed drinking zima in the day room the day room is a common area and everybody is there. Zima, if you guys remember what Zima is, it was a bubbly, fruity, I don't even know what kind of beverage. It wasn't wine. I will tell you that. It was a flavored malt beverage. Did you put Jolly Ranchers or cherries in your No, Zima? you had to make it look like water. So Zima oh. was perfect because it was colorless. Yeah, but at the time, you either put a Jolly Rancher or a, or a cherry in there, uh-uh. I believe. Uh-uh. I was the, the goal was to hide the fact that I was drinking okay. so that I could meet up with the guy that I was dating. Right. If anybody knows in training, you're not dating anybody. No. <laughs> you're not dating anybody, but you do. No. So we we enjoyed our beverage mm-hmm. in a clear water bottle. Everybody thought it was water. And then and then I will say this. I, I did have moments in, in the military where I sealed the deal. This time I did seal the deal and it was out in the pavilion because you can't get up, you can't get with anybody up in anybody's room. And that's, that's a science fact right there. Okay. So that was my whole scenario. Like a gazebo? A pavilion. So a pavilion was where you could go out and some of them were gazebos. Some of them were kind of more open with pink picnic benches. Hey, you know what? I was 19. Okay. I had, 
I had a wild side, okay? Jen, how many people did they have in each barracks room? Uh, in- two at that point. Two. All right, two. But it was, it's a dormitory. Like, you, it's yeah. a dorm. Like, you can't so, walk down a hall. Do you have a bathroom in the hall, or do you have Jack and Jill bathrooms, uh, one between each room? Jack and Jill. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See how this is his analytical mind, like, probing into my stories. Okay, the second no. one, again, was somebody I was Burn dating. This once, was Rob. Shame on me. Burn me twice, Jen. Shame on me again. I don't know. <laughs> second one was... With the Olive Garden, no less, because, you know, when you're 21 years old and you're in Savannah, Georgia, or outside of Savannah, Georgia, the the hottest place to go is Olive Garden. True. Rest uh, all you can eat in our yeah. uh, <laughs> Exactly. It's and not a southern food capital or anything. It's not a southern food capital? Savannah, Georgia? No. I know, but it was outside, and we didn't. It was 45 minutes away from where I was stationed, okay? Oh, okay? Gosh. We were excited to go to the OG, okay? Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> Drinking that, I don't even know what beverage is in that. That cask, that little rattan basket, and the wine. It probably could have been Chianti, something Italian, maybe yep. Sangiovese. Doesn't matter. It was red. It was alcoholic. It was Valentine's Day. <laughs> We were going to make the best of it on our budget. (laughs) And uh, the saddest part of that was there was no sealing of the deal. I feel like all these stories conclude with sealing of the deal or non-sealing of the deal Mm -hmm. because both of us were too drunk and slept in the car. Oh, oh. So you got drunk at Olive Garden and and passed out in your car? Okay. When you put it like that, it sounds pathetic. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> I, no, I just wanted to. I just uh, just wanted to clarify to it, right? Clarify okay. The, All right. Just summarizing. So my third story is a hooker ruined my date night. Now this was a time when, again, I was in. <laughs> I love Rob's face. This was when I was in Korea. My autobiography. A hooker ruined my date night. It wasn't the um, copious amounts of soju, which we've had after after party discussions of soju, but I was in Korea Korea and we were drinking. It was one of those we randomly had non working like we didn't we weren't working um, opposite shifts, which we tend to do a lot in the military, especially in my unit. And we had a rare like date night. Okay, and we went out and we drank because we're 22 years old and that's what you do, right? In Korea. And, of uh, hmm? Yes, oh, of course. Okay, okay. I was just saying, yes. And um, uh, we, were, we were leaving. We were going home to seal the deal because there were opportunities at that point. And a, a lovely juicy woman, or juicy girl as we like to call them, uh, was taking advantage of a, of a soldier. And I stepped up and tried to convince said soldier to come with me and my girlfriend that was with us on on because that's how dating happens you go with your friends you have to have a battle buddy you go with your friends dating happens that way and i i wanted to pour him in a taxi cab so the hooker ruined ruined my night because i got chased and questioned by whom the mps these were two id guys that had come down for the weekend they were, it was really close to curfew. Yet another reason why I wanted to pull them out. I got questioned leaving the bottom of the hill. The MPs wanted to know why the fuck there was a girl running down the hill chasing me with her stiletto. Huh. It's a okay. reasonable question. It is a reasonable question. But ruin, ruined my night. Didn't get laid. All right. So, okay. Let me recap my three stories. If I can remember. Zima in the day room, number one. All right. <laughs> number two, drunken Olive Garden, no nookie. <laughs> Hooker ruins my date night. Go. Vote now. <laughs> and I feel like I literally, I don't know if I feel like I've uh, absolved myself of sin and I feel cleaner or I feel dirtier to have shared all of those <laughs> things. I will say either way, Jen, you've done a great job here. You, you've done I, I certainly feel dirtier, and I'm liking it very much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's good. I, I'm glad everybody has stuck around for this portion of the of Wine Antics Live, because we are. We're going over a little bit. But you've learned a little bit about Jen, too. <laughs> I know which is the lie. Hmm. Let's see what people it's, are saying. 
All right, see what people are saying, but I know it. I know it. What are people saying? Number three is the lie, says Kelly. Yep. Uh, number two is the lie, says Rhett. Okay. Uh, I, I think a hooker ruined Stubbs night in Korea, too. Uh, I do have a hooker in Korea story, but it has nothing to do with tonight's show. Nope. So I can get to that in the after party if you guys want to join us. I've only ever changed planes in Korea. I need to get You're out. You're missing and out. Meet, meet yeah. those hookers. All right. Yeah, Rob, I will, I will also say if you, weren't in the, if you weren't in a United States military service in Korea, it's a different experience, I, I feel like. From what I've heard from others who've just gone there as tourists, it's a way different experience. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I do have an interesting Korean hooker story. Okay, However, guys. <laughs> what uh, do you think is the lie? Gosh. So a Jen, uh, a hooker kept Jen from getting lucky. I, hmm, I don't know that I can repeat now, like say right after that. I don't feel like that's true. Because <laughs> oh, Jen would power through the hooker. <laughs> I feel that like was, it, it was a six inch stiletto. Thing. Right. Right. I feel, yeah, she wouldn't let a hooker stop her. This is, this is a good one. Um, that gazebo thing sounds, wow. So here's the problem with this. I don't know <laughs> that Jen in this day would still admit to that story even when she was ni- from when she was 19. That's my only question about that. Is that a questionable story about how things happen during that type of training? It's not at all. Um, you're at AIT, so you'd been to boot camp. You had, what, like 10 <laughs> days of leave or so? Uh, maybe or maybe you didn't see your high school squeeze and get a little bit while you were home. Uh, you get back. You've got these young, buff gentlemen who have just been through boot camp and full of testosterone and cut up. Mm. Jen, I'm going to say the Olive Garden story is the lie. Okay, number two. How about you, Rob? Do you have three minutes worth of rationale to figure out which one is the lie? <laughs> I need three seconds. Okay. Number two is the lie because that is the story that upsets me most. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Who's the winner? Because we have we have ones for everything. Uh, so Lauren is the winner. I can't decide, but I'll go with number one. Number mm-hmm. one is the lie. The oh. lie part of it is I did not seal the deal, and it wasn't a date. But I did do the Zima stuff. Okay. Oh, I really wanted you to to have sex in a pavilion. That sounds nice. Not at that time. Uh. <laughs> Wait till Rob and I set up your Tinder profile, Jen. We'll make that happen. Mm-hmm. And and yes, a, a hooker did ruin my date night in Korea. Completely <laughs> ruin my date night. That story was obviously true. Jen, <laughs> Jen likes. I love uh, dry red wine. <laughs> Rom- rom-coms and getting busy in gazebos. Jen, we're going to have people swiping right on you left and right. Or right and right. How about These are right? all the men that I think are going to be quality for the rest of my life. Thank you. I can't wait till you set up that profile. Seriously, viewers out there, why are you watching this? You're on the internet now watching this. And as Rob alluded to earlier, there's porn on the internet. And you're watching this BS right now. What the hell is wrong with you? This is hilarious. All right. <laughs> wow i feel suddenly sort of mm, less we, enthused to be on this show wait till you hear my story bro <laughs> oh, okay okay let's do it right, let's, let's do, do it. it i'm gonna jump right in all right um wow two of my stories are from when i actually was uh an active duty marine the first one involves, I had two buddies. I had one buddy specifically. He had gone from Camp Lejeune and met some girls or met a girl in Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, that was a, what, two and a half, three hour drive or so. Best I can remember from Camp Lejeune. Um, so he had met this girl. Uh, his buddy was with him and she had a friend with him, but she was like talking to other friends at this point. This was a couple of weeks ahead of time. They approached me uh, late Thursday afternoon and say, Stub, we're going down to Wilmington because I'm going to hook up with this chick I met a couple weeks ago at this this club that we went to down in Wilmington. College town, popular haunt for uh, young jarheads. Um, But they're having, they have a visiting friend and we need a third person to go. Uh, Will you go and basically be the, you know, distraction, potential uh, makeout suitor for the evening? Fall on the grenade? 
So we jump in his uh, Ford Ranger pickup truck, which was jacked up. I know that's hard to believe. A little jacked up Ford Ranger. It had the extended cab, but not the four doors. So I think I rode in what we at the time called the bitch seat uh, that three hours down to Wilmington. We get there. As far as I could tell, these three women didn't care that any of us were there. They were disappointed from the get-go. I come to understand that the second friend who was the best friend had not met the other guy with us and thought nothing of him whatsoever. Um, so it was a whole thing. And so we, we had actually met them in a restaurant um, and it was like a Bennigan's or whatever the hell it was at the time. And so it was just this awkward, weird, like I'll have the seafood platter, I'll have the Swiss burger and everyone's trying to impress everyone. It was weird. So we somehow end up back at the, the original two girls apartment um, where clearly no one's getting lucky here. Now I had no vision of getting lucky. I was trying to be a good battle buddy, as you alluded to before, Jen, but I excused myself to the head. That's what we call a bathroom in the Naval services. Um, and I came out and the original girl who my one buddy was dead set, this is going to be a thing. He's sealing the deal. He's going to get him some meets me and grabs me and tries to kiss me and sort of half-ass succeeds, I will admit. Um, but then her friend comes out of the bedroom, her best friend, and says, this third friend here uh, is going to be leaving soon. Why don't you stay here with both of us and let your buddies go home? How about that? All right, that's that's number one. Did All I, of them did become I yours. Or turned down. I, I, I guess turned you... down because... Once again, you don't you don't do that to your buddies, and oh. these broads were, and it's definitely difficult for for a man of my age and and whatever to say. These these girls were the classic catty bitches, mm -hmm. but I did turn down that invitation for three few, uh, strange chicks. How about that? I guess so. I, I like your modicum of disappointment. They were terrible human beings. I was also <laughs> halfway technically between relationships, which leads me to my next story. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So yes. you, let me just summarize here. So you, you impress these ladies with your order of a Swiss burger, and then you go back, and then one of them tries to kiss you and half-ass succeeds, but, yeah. but you're in halfway of a relationship. And so... I was between... I was, I was, I was sort of... Eh, eh. I'm going to get to the second, the first relationship here in a minute, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, that was on its way out the door. I went to be a buddy. Um, I didn't impress these ladies because quite honestly, Rob, I didn't care. <laughs> and I don't think this is different between men and women. When you pretend you don't care, you will get pursued. Oh, absolutely. Right. So this, this has nothing to do with how young and strapping and hot I looked at the time with that you little yourself short. or she haircut or whatever. Oh, I was, I was hot AF. Let, let's get that straight. However, I think it had less to do with that and more to do with the fact that, you know, I was, and I'm going to admit this way better looking than either of the two dudes I was with. Um, I think it was the fact that I didn't really care. And it was very obvious to me that I wasn't going to put up with any of the business that, that was any of the shade, as the kids would say now, that was coming our way collectively um, with that. Yeah, it was a weird situation. I've been in weirder, but that was a weird situation. All right. That's number one. On your face. All right, next story. I'm going to try to make this one shorter. Um, I was very young Marine. I had gone to boot camp. Uh, went home on my 10 days of leave, went to my uh, infantry training of 10 days that they give you special for all the jarheads because every Marine's a rifleman and we all get a little bit, or it wasn't 10 days, it was more than that, but went to that and I went to my intel school in Virginia Beach, Virginia. My high school girlfriend uh, came to visit me with her father. I decided at that time as a young Marine that I needed to propose to her and I asked her father for his permission uh, at the hotel room before I took her out uh, on the Saturday night they were there. And we went to very specifically a Bennigan's <laughs> and I stood on a table and literally jumped on a table at a Bennigan's and sang a Harry Connick Jr. song to her. 
and I will tell you which one it was. It was uh, We Are In Love. I know you so well. I can tell by the sound of your voice if you're really in love with me. Ooh, Did you skip you out are, on your bill? You are. <laughs> no, I stood on the table and sang to her, and then I got down on my knee and proposed to her right there in a fucking Bennigan's in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Hot. And she said yes, and she is not the woman I'm currently married to. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! There's story number two. Do any of these have anything to do with wine? Well, I mean, there's <laughs> drinking. Uh, there was no, actually no drinking in that story. There was drinking in the story in Wilmington. How I mean, the Benigan's wine, wine list. Like days. drinking. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> just weird, sexy stories. Sorry, right. I missed no, I boat. love weird, sexy stories. Just checking. I'm okay, a, I'm not an A student, Rob. Come on. We we don't all drink Amarone. I I fake <laughs> my way. I fake wow. my way through college and grad school. I mean, let's be honest here. Look at me. I get by on my on my good looks and flashing these baby blues. You know, sometimes oh. I put mascara on to accentuate them, but we're Ooh. not going to talk about that. All right, my third story. Um, it definitely has to do with drinking, not wine specifically, other than we were going to drink champagne at midnight because it was New Year's Eve. So uh, the Rib and I have lived in Virginia for a while. Uh, at one point, one of my best good friends from high school moved up here and we started a band called The Shooters. And we played all over the Northern Virginia and D.C. Uh, area in very small places because no one really cared about what we were doing. But we were pretty good. So we had played at a place in downtown Fredericksburg called the Bourbon Room uh, several times, which was a cool little upstairs room as you get in these little quaint towns. Uh, so the Bourbon Room got taken over and uh, converted or changed a name, changed ownership. Uh, there was a restaurant downstairs, bar upstairs. Uh, the name of the room upstairs changed from the Bourbon Room to Pearl. Now, once it changed to Pearl, uh, the Rib and I, when visiting our friends in downtown Fredericksburg had frequented there a couple of times and had, you know, an appetizer and a drink on a Tuesday night. Well, we get word that is the sister for lack of a better word, uh, establishment to the very well-known gay bar in downtown Fredericksburg called Merriman's. Yeah, I know a lesbian bar called Pearl surprise. I never saw it as that or thought that that was the case, but we decided because they were having a great new year's Eve shindig this particular year that we would go and take all of our friends to include some from out of town. So we, we went there now in waiting in line for the head. Once again, that's bathroom for the Naval service. Um, had a, a and I'm going to admit a pretty good looking young gentleman start talking to me as we're waiting in line. And he asked, Oh yeah. Hey, how are you doing? What's your name? Who are you here with? I'm like, I'm here with my wife and our friends. Of course he responds. Oh, well, your wife is very understanding. So I, I'm taken aback a little bit, but I'm like, oh, I go, yeah, of course. I, I go, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, she is very understanding, but no, we're just here. We've been here. This is a cool bar. Like, who cares? We're having a good time. And he's like, oh, great. So we have a group of like 10 people and we're sitting on like a horseshoe couch pit. It's right before you get out of the hall to, to the facilities. So this, this guy's coming by, you know, back and forth all night and chatting with us. So it was, let's fast forward a couple of hours, and it was after the champagne toast at midnight, standing, uh, the guy comes over and talks to me, and we're sitting there chatting, and um, he decides to go on full and make a move on me, and lean in for a kiss, and um, uh, goes full on uh, grabbing for the family jewels, while trying to sneak a sneak kiss from me. Good lord! Yeah, so I pull back uh, respectfully and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. And, and honestly, that, that was about as intense as I got. And then, of course, he looks like, wow, I'm, I'm ready to get beaten. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to beat a gay man for hitting on me in a gay bar. Like, that, that's on me at this point, right? I mean, look at this thing, seriously. Um, so, yeah, there, there's that last story is, is that. So it's not specifically dating. The rib was there. We'd been married for a number of years at that point. So which one of those three is a lie? So summarize real quick, because because that was like 10 minutes of story time with Uncle Stubb. I know. All right. <laughs> so first story is I go to Wilmington, North Carolina with my two Marine Corps buddies. Uh, and the Walk away from a threesome. Of my one, one buddy uh, wants me to stay for a threesome and figure out how to get back later the next day. Um, the second story is I 
actually had a first fiance and proposed to her after at Bennigan's. Sleep and standing on a table and singing Harry Connick Jr. songs to her at Bennigan's. And the third story is I was, I mean, we would call it sexually assaulted. Now me, I just call it having a good time and a simple uh, threes company type misunderstanding. I mean, shit happens, whatever. Uh, that I was, uh, yeah, proposi- literally propositioned and grabbed by a, by a gay man in a bar on New Year's Eve. All right. So this is the time now, guys. Vote one, two, or three. Which one is the lie? <laughs> are, we, are we getting votes? Is we, there a strong contender? N- well, Lauren says number two is the lie. Yeah. And so number, number I'm giving two, Kern like 2.57 seconds more okay. to decide because he's been yeah, ribbing more. you your entire story time. We have I, I have to yeah. say I loved all three of these stories and um, I really hope they're all true, except for one of them, and that's obviously the lie. Okay. All right, viewers, what do you think? So we've got three votes for number two. I'm actually going to say number one. Not okay. because I don't think that something along those lines happened, mm-hmm. but I think you could have skewed enough details okay. to make it a lie. Right. The the way that that one's a lie is that that he did stay for the three way because no one in their right mind would like give up the chance to have a three way and like your buddies would have understood. I mean, come on, like that's just yeah. They weren't actually dating or married. You might be right, Rob. I love your thinking on that. Yeah, I don't know. Like if yeah, if two people invited a friend of mine to be in a three way and they were like not into me, I'd been like, oh, awesome, whatever. You good on ya? Yeah. Go Rhett says it. Stubb would never walk away from a threesome. Exactly. And then Lori exactly. also thinks that number one is a lie. Kern says number two is a lie as Stubb would never set foot in Virginia before he was married to the rib. Okay. Stubb never <laughs> set foot. <laughs> I can't picture Stubb proposing in a Bennigan, so I'm going to say that that's the lie because Ooh. I don't know. You've seen singing the Harry Connick Jr. tunes, Rob? That's, that's no. what... I could picture you singing the Harry Connick Jr. tune. I was uh, young and dumb, my friend, and he's a Marine. I don't know. You just, you seem so classy and then again. Now? Like, well, yes, now. (laughs) All right. I I guess we were all a lot less classy in our youth. It's true. And, but I don't know. I don't, I don't see it happening. So um, also that seems very similar to a story that Jen told me before we started, uh, (laughs) broadcasting so I'm that's no that's lie. lie i told that's him actually I... how jen and i met no, <laughs> no, it's not. I, I literally told a true story that was so freaking similar and that's why i asked you if you walked out and didn't pay the bill no, i did not because that's no, what they did I never walked out and not paid a bill all right so are all the guesses in so rob you say that the proposal is a lie jen what do you think is a lie uh, I think number one is the lie. I think Agreed something. Her. I think something in there is is a lie. That there may be some truth to it, but I think okay. you lied about some aspect of that. Okay. All right. Should I reveal now? Yes, you should. All right. The actual lie is the threesome story. Oh. Yeah. You That's did two have- for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you have I, a threesome? I appreciate that both Pretty of you though that. are. Even though I told this man that I was there with my wife and was, you know, not trying to experiment, that a gay man would still come on to me. I appreciate that you both believe that. Very much so, by the way. Uh, No, the Wilmington story is true, except for all three of those broads had no desire to see any of our faces whatsoever. It It was literally the most uncomfortable thing ever, and I hated both of those men for it for several weeks. I wouldn't talk to either one of them. I'm like, I literally went down to do a favor to play deflection so one or both of you guys could get lucky. And um, you lied to me about the interest. You lied to me about everything. And it was really the most awkward, one of the most awkward situations of my entire life. That was super unfair to you. Yeah, of course it was. Eh, Whatever. That's what it is. (laughs) It got me a couple of six packs of Zima and I was good. (laughs) Zima. Because that is the standard. Menegans burger, at least. (laughs) Oh, I enjoyed that mushroom Swiss burger. It was great. If you got it without mayonnaise, because I put too much mayonnaise on those things Mm. back in the day. That does sound really tasty, actually. I kind of want to go to Benigan's right now. What the heck? (laughs) 
<laughs> and we've completely derailed. So Somebody's <laughs> trying to bring Bennigan's back, but it hasn't happened to, yet, Rob. Stop trying to make it, fetch a thing, business? Gretchen. You know, Rob, when there's a menu at a restaurant of like 40 pages, it's awesome because you know they do everything well, right? Is that the rule? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. When they have 40 pages, you know they've just perfected all of it. So they're like, Absolutely. Look at all no, of that's it. right. Oh, that's right. That's true. That's, that's why that's just slide rule. front and back and go with that. <laughs> but seriously, seriously, Bennigan's. <laughs> he didn't marry the woman. The same parent group who owns Bennigan's also owns steak and ale. They're trying to bring steak and ale back, potentially. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you did propose to this person. I did. No, I actually did, and she said yes, and we were oh. technically engaged for a while. Oh, uh, technically? Well, I mean, we were actually engaged, yeah. And now this is turning into <laughs> therapy for Stubb. Yeah, no, Let's get this fine. back on track, boys. <laughs> no surprise to every, anyone, and anyone who's watching here would know who that is, but don't, don't name this woman, but... Uh, lovely woman, uh, the little bit we've uh, chatted over the years, she, you know, we both went our separate ways when we decided that we weren't the best for each other. And yeah, she's a lovely, intelligent, beautiful woman and has a great uh, husband and family now. Story complete. The, disc the indiscretions of youth. What are you, you going to say here? Yeah, we haven't talked about any of my proposals in the past. That'll be on another wine antics. <laughs> Ooh, indecent proposals. No, like well, you, yeah, at least one of them was. Rob, maybe that's your fourth appearance on the show, indecent proposals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stubb, you teased us earlier before the show started and we were getting prepared that you had a surprise. I did, because I knew we were talking about romance and maybe everything would go with wine. Rob really went well with the wine thing. I, I wanted to ask each of you, so please tell us about your first time. <laughs> and by first time, I mean, tell us about the wine that really made you decide that you wanted to pursue wine. All right. Drops ready. He goes first. first. That was better when I asked that question. I was like, oh my God. The delay on that was epic. Thank you, Stubb. No, Rob, your face was like, oh my God, am I really <laughs> going to do this? Because Stubb asked me and he's awesome. And we're live. He was like, oh my God, F you. I'm never talking to you again. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the first wines that made us fall in love with wine. Uh, Excellent. We're talking about love for Valentine's Day. Excellent. Yes. My, my first sexual experience is not, it's, I can't. It's very embarrassing. None, none of those are good. Really dreadful. Really dreadful. Yes, of okay. Course it is. Not at all how I pictured it would be. Of course it is. <sighs> um, okay. All right. I'll go first. So um, I went to Bone in France when I was living at the University of Freiburg. And I went just for a day and I was like, I'm going to Burgundy and I'm going to Bone. Mm -hmm. And I went to this place called Marche au Vin, where it, they've ruined it now, but, but then it was amazing. And you could uh, taste in these candlelit cellars. It was actually very romantic. I was there by myself and you could taste all you wanted, just pouring wine. They just had wines like Premier Cru Burgundies on barrels um, with candles. And then you would pour it yourself in a test of vin and, and try it. And, um, and I don't remember very well the wines that I drank that day because um, I uh, just got drunk. And, um, but it was magnificent. And I knew enough to buy this 1995 Givry. And I put it in my backpack because I was a backpacker and I brought it home from Freiburg. And then uh, two or three years later, I had it with my parents uh, over dinner. And I still remember that wine because it was the first time I'd experienced structure in a wine and I could feel it sort of building itself on my palate. And the structure was so obvious and so delightful. And I'll never forget that experience. And because I thought, oh, like this is what all the fuss is about. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just amazing. And I'd only spent, ugh, I mean, it couldn't have been more than 18, $19 at the time. And, uh, what a wine, it was magnificent. And um, so that was the wine that really taught me that like, wow, this, this could be something really special. Aw, I felt like he was getting sentimental for a moment there. 
was a little yeah. bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, I will go next, and then Steph, you can. I was going to ask about. That's sure. Was What's yeah. that? Sorry. I said it was better than the first time you guys thought I was asking you about for ini- <laughs> the initial impression. Yeah. They're all prettier than that. Yeah, my my yeah. first wine love was much better than my first time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So, so um it's kind of funny because i think there there are moments like what rob said that he has this pivotal moment when it comes to to wine i actually i have experiences where they're pivotal moments in my career in wine um but for me it what attracted me to wine and what made me become passionate was when i took the csw when i took the certificate special i Certified Specialist of Wine, and this was at a time when I was working for the government, but it opened a whole world of knowledge to me that has such connections in culture and social implications and how you can take an agricultural product and bring it to something delicious that so many people can enjoy. So I didn't really, that was me getting bit by the wine bug, and that's a lot of what that that moment is with a wine that you really love. So that was that was it for me going through the CSW and really opening my eyes to a whole new world of what wine can be. Um, and I would say that in terms of having a really great wine experience, I remember three wineries that I went to in Sonoma back in 2015. Uh, it was true at Hearst. It was uh, uh, Bellantino, Bellantino. Ugh. and I can't pronounce it right. Um, anyway, and then Dutcher Crossing. So most of them were up in, in very northern um, mm-hmm. Sonoma uh, region. And tasting through Zinfandel's through that area changed the way I looked at what wine could be because up to that point, I'd only had East Coast wines. I'd only had East Coast Cabernet Sauvignons, Cabernet Francs. Uh, I'd never really had a small producer uh, of Zinfandel, but to see the quality and the depth of what wine can be from California really changed like, okay, I like this shit. I want more of these experiences. <laughs> so you were an East End girl and the West End wasn't a dead end world for you is what you're saying. Right? <laughs> West Western girls. West End girls. <laughs> Try here. <laughs> but those are those are my two pivotal moments. It's not quite as boning it up in france but you know it <laughs> your story no, that's in, in the france. Bone. uh i went to france to bone line of the night rob you you get it and you didn't even mean to <laughs> <laughs> i went to france to bone <laughs> who doesn't go to don't france? we all no, bitch I come, mean, on. come on right i mean no. oh it's for the food and whatever the culture no 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 it's all for the boating it's all for the boating so how about <laughs> Can't wait for this after party, guys. Uh, so, how about you, Stub? <laughs> so, I think about my first time. Uh, you know, the Rim and I were in the core together, uh, married a Marine, as I've said before, uh, as every young five-year-old boy dreams of marrying a marrying Marine. Uh, did it, uh, and actually, next week on Valentine's Day, as some of you know, is actually our wedding anniversary. So, we've been married for years. Uh, next week and that's if I make it I don't want to say how long that is because I don't the rib doesn't like giving her age away it's been a long time though we've been married a long time and I'm very happy about that Uh, but as we get out of the core and you do all the things that people check off the boxes right like you finish college you do this you buy the house you get the job you have the kids like we're doing all these things we never had the kids obviously at this point now all of you should know there's no kids but Everyone's checking the boxes. So as you start doing these things, you start going to nicer places and ordering wine or having dinner parties where you have <laughs> several courses and people bring bottles of wine. So we actually had friends bring a bottle of wine uh, to our house because uh, back in the day, as I do today still, and I'm trying to get back into, like I cooked a lot. Like that, that is my first love. And I realized at this point, how well food and wine went together, but someone bought a brought a bottle of wine. It was a Gervitz Um, It was, it, it's not anything you were talking about earlier, Rob, I promise you, but it was a Fetzer Gervitz Because at that point, my experience with drinking had been, you know, uh, whatever beer was on draft or cheap on happy hour. Sure. Uh, 
while I was a jarhead or uh, Jack and Coke, basically. Like I would drink whiskey, I would drink, you know, I'd drink Jack and Coke or Bacardi and Coke. Um, so as people started introducing wine to me, it was not something I understood and didn't know. But this bottle of Fetzer Gerberstreiner, and this has been, once again, years ago, um, at the time, it just, it just piqued me in such a way because it was tart and sweet at the same time. Um, it, it, it just had, it just, it overtook me with some character, which I didn't understand. And every now and again, I'm going to admit, I will go to either Total Wine or the grocery store or yeah, wherever and buy a bottle of this just to remind myself that this is what got me into this. Now, is it produced in higher quantities and probably not exactly the same as it was all those years ago? Maybe a little bit, but it reminds me of what got me into this uh, down this path because I immediately started buying and studying and trying to find every wine I could because until that point, I, I didn't care. Like I would taste wine at parties and be like, oh, you've got to have it with the cheese. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. It's freaking wine. Uh, hey, uh, Jack Daniels rocks, please. Like that was just me before then. And I don't know what it was. And it was a development of a palate. I mean, I had a palate for food. So I don't know why the wine, but I, I didn't grow up with wine and I didn't know it. So like, I have a special place in my heart for that bottle, right? Hey. It's like, you know, growing up and the girl you first dated, and you know, the first girl who let you go uh, under the shirt, over the bra in junior high, um, you have an affinity for her. You remember what that meant to you as that first experience uh, even though she's now in jail um, for the rest of her life, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't connect with that that I special know exactly moment. Exactly like, what that's like. Well, I'm, <laughs> and once again, it's it's not specifically that. I actually wrote an article. It's been a couple of years ago. Maybe I'll pin it to the top of my website called "Wine Is Scarier Than Boobs," and I obviously wrote it from the perspective of uh, a teenage boy uh, who liked girls and knew he liked girls and was nervous about girls. Um, but I actually caveated that saying, look, I, here's my experience, but everyone's had that experience, whatever that is, whatever your preference is, where, whenever this experience is, uh, you were scared of the first time you were really getting up close and personal with, you know, the intimate parts of someone you, you were totally for. Um, but that to me is, is the love affair with wine is, uh, people seem to be more afraid of that than doing those experiences. And my point in the article, please go read it. It's, it's actually, it's creepy and hilarious. It, it's probably more creepy, but it is hilarious and true. Is you get this, every new experience is a new experience. You get that sensation, you get that tingle, you get that excitement, you get that adrenaline rush. And that's the awesome thing about wine for me is every experience is a little bit different. Even though you kind of know what this thing is, like you know what all the parts look like, you know what all the fruit flavors taste like, you know what the minerals taste like and all the land and the dirt and all that, but every experience is still a little bit different and that's what makes wine so exciting for me. That's and he's going to be story. writing his dissertation on said excitement of wine. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what's great about wine is that you don't have to commit to just one kind of wine. Amen. Right. You can be quite promiscuous. Wine does not make you sign a fucking prenup. Oops, I cursed. I'm sorry, Jen. <laughs> the hell do I care? <laughs> so, all right. So normally I do final thoughts, but we have gone way over time. But I think it was a fun. It was a fun game. It was something different that we don't normally do here on Wine Antics Live. But I want to thank you very much, Rob, for being a third timing. Third timing. Third, third time guest. <laughs> third time and guest. This is the third time that Rob has been on with us. And I hope yeah, that does we... Does that mean we've had a three-way with Rob now? <laughs> we've had... Or does that mean we will have a three-way in sort of parallel with my third appearance on the show? Only the bubbles know. <laughs> I think we've had three ways with Rob three times. Oh, three people on wow. screen. Oh, three times. Mic, mic drop. I'll hurt my mic. Anyway, so I'm going to close out the show. <laughs> I'm going to close out the show. I'm posting the after party links. I want to thank you again, Rob, for being on. And we can't wait to have you next year for Valentine's Day again because you are super fun, super awesome. 
super sexy. What? Hmm? Four. Or before. Four. Or four. What? Or before. I'm, a, I'm just saying. We definitely get you on for this super sexy time around <laughs> Valentine's Day. We love it. <laughs> it is such a pleasure to be on your show. You guys are so fantastic. And I really appreciate you having me for a- uh, Of course, Rob. Yes, it is a joy to be on your show. Come by the after party. Rob oh, may yeah. show that he has pants on or not. There are no confirmations or denying, but the after party will be lots of fun. I'll put the link up. Stub, I'm cutting you off because you became Uncle Stub way too long for this episode. Good night, folks. Right. <laughs>